like in the LA area, we don't have that much farms, and we're pretty much just having our whole attention on celebrities and the media, everything. And we don't really see the impact of what the Central Valley has on the entire state as a whole. It wasn't until I moved up here into Fresno that I realized how much the agricultural culture and community of Fresno, of the whole valley, has such a great impact on our economy as a state and to our culture as a state. When we had that freeze in 1991-92, was devastating for the community. It, it, I think the biggest thing was, was shock and fear of how large the freeze was. It started, I think, the 19th or 20th of December. And we thought, oh, it'll be a day or two of it, no big deal. We've had some freezes before, get over with. We were totally devastated. It was 67% unemployment, and then a year later, both the other two companies folding up. That's the time we had the white flight take place. If you will, people said, well, this town's going broke. We talked about just, just barring the town, if you will, or just unincorporating the town and go back to the county, let the county provide protection service for the police, let the county provide everything and just do away with the city because we didn't hardly make it. And everybody was down and out. There weren't, weren't many jobs and everybody was just very, very glum. We're discussing and I said, you know, we need to have a funeral to get rid of this doom and gloom. So we conducted a funeral down on Main Street. <clears throat> it was led by a horse-drawn carriage with a uh, casket in it filled with frozen oranges and pieces of cable and cans of olives. That was a very cathartic uh, event. And I kid you not, it was gloomy and overcast and the, right after the casket went in, it came out just like this. The sun came out and it was just, it was, you know, Cecil B. DeMille's, it was, it was unbelievable. Hollywood couldn't have done better. I think if people really did believe in, you know, saving <clears throat> their town and uh, saving it, I think it would be a change, a drastic change because you'll get, it'll, that belief would spread to everyone else and they would have a little more hope for in their life. It was the first house that, like I tell you, we were back on, over oh, we on church by the dump. We had no inside plumbing. And we moved here, we thought we were in heaven. It was, it was a three bedroom and the boys had their room and me and my sister shared a room and we had a, a bathtub and running toilet. And we actually, I mean, it was a, we, kitchen. a kitchen uh, with a stove, a gas stove. A large backyard. Large backyard, large front yard. We were like, you know, it, it, wasn't no, it wasn't ugly then to us. And we thought we were in seventh heaven. We were working in the grape fields. It was such hard work and such heat and hard labor. I made up my mind that I was going to go to school, and so I would never have to do that again. And it made you, every summer I would say, I'm gonna study harder, I'm gonna get better grades, because I didn't wanna work in a grade field all my life. I, that's all I knew. And I knew the only way to get out of the grade field is to go to school. Okay, I did farm work, I did with my grandmother, and I learned a great deal about hard work. And that taught me so much. That taught me that if I wanna get somewhere in life, I have to study work hard in school so I won't be doing the hard labor that you know my ma ma mother used to do or my grandmother used to do or my grandfather you know so. so in 1983 in December uh, the bank called me and said they were going to foreclose we had a balance that we just couldn't pay and I said no you're not we've worked too hard for, the, for all this I go every day to the bank and I tell the president that uh, he couldn't take the ranches, that was there some other way that we could uh, do it? And he said, no, the, the board uh, just won't approve of anything like that. Um, if anything, it just makes me realize how, how hard people will fight just to um, stand up for like what they believe in. And, um, that really means a lot to me. You know, Fresno is so diverse that if we don't remember, you know, who we were and what we were, uh, we will lose that, and that is the core of Fresno.